Today, I want to talk about a relatively new concept that's out there and that's gaining a lot of popularity uh, for several different reasons. And that's this idea of vibe coding. And, and what does it mean? And, and how does this apply to all of academia? Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain what vibe coding is and then see how this is something that we actually all need to understand because there's lots of things that's going on here that's going to also have ramifications for all of higher education and education in general. So first, let's talk about vibe coding and its definition. This actually became pretty popular in February when Andre Karpathy, a founding member of OpenAI, in a post stated, there's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. It's possible because the LLMs, example, cursor, composer with sonnet, are getting too good. So I barely even touch the keyboard. When I get error messages, I just copy paste them in with no comment. Usually that fixes it. So there, this is simply talking about using AI as an assistant, right, to, to do the code for you. So he's simply, telling the, the AI and he's simply talking and saying, hey, uh, create a web page that does this, create a game that can do this, simply saying it and the AI is able to understand what he wants and create all the back end code needed to then put it all together and actually execute. So this is something that's happening more and more. All of the top AIs are able to do this as well. You don't need uh, special code creators, although it works even better with that. But OpenAI does this. Claude is number one as far as uh, coders' preference for, for using it. And then same thing with, with Grok. They all have this capability. Now, again, I'm not a computer scientist, so this isn't my focus. But wait a second, because you're going to see how this extrapolates to all of education. So now what's happening is that with vibe coding, I'm not focusing on these little specific aspects of the backend code. And instead I'm focusing more on the bigger picture, the big thing of what I want as far as I want it to do this. I want these actions to occur. I want this to have this type of progress and do this and that. This is the power of AI. This is what it's able to do here. Now, there's lots of pros and cons, right? Because this is going to fundamentally change what it is to be a coder uh, on several different levels. Because if I don't need to know all of the specific aspects of how to write good code, how to put things together like that, and all I have to do is simply talk, well then that changes the underlying skills that a coder needs, right? Uh, that changes what I need to be developing, what I need to be learning in school in order to be this good coder. So there's things to think about here. First, let's look at some of the, the, the pluses that have come out saying that, hey, these are some top-notch things that come from simply vibe coding. In this article from Neurodiversity Marketing, and it expresses how developers are able to complete tasks 55% faster, increasing pull request submissions by 26%. 41% of developers report that cognitive load is reduced. Another big one here is that 30% reduction in developer turnover, meaning that those working in this field simply enjoy their work more and burn out much less. So what are the challenges problem with it? Well, if we have the AI create the code, then there's probably going to be issues such as lack of structure, issues dealing with over-reliance. I won't understand the code if I'm not actually creating the code. Stability, that could be issues with this type of code. And then possible issues dealing with safety and security, being able to properly troubleshoot to fix a problem when it occurs. So yes, those are some issues associated with it as well as lots of positives. Now you're getting people that aren't necessarily coders that they can come in and start to become coders because they don't need to have those type of mathematical skills or those traditional coding capabilities in order to be coders. Issues such as neurodiversity comes up here as far as, well, now you can have people that aren't so focused on these meticulous details, but have more bigger picture type of thing. They could be successful in this type of field as well. So lots of things to think about here. And the, the other issues as far as the negative aspects, as far as oh, stability of the code, um, structure of the code, and all these different things, well, that can actually be overcome, one, by the way that someone is prompting the AI to put the code together. 
So enhancements in the way that the code is actually created can come directly from the prompting. So if I prompt it in a structured way and tell it to be structured, well then it's gonna give me better code and that's gonna address a lot of these issues. Now you and I, we can't just simply go to the AI and tell it to make all these things for us and then be able to have that up on the internet or have an app be fully made and created because there's still additional steps where you need a coder to, to actually put it all together for you and finalize it and check it and put all the different libraries and all the other different technical aspects. But that's changing as well because the AI is getting smarter and smarter and more capable, more agentic and able to do these additional steps. So this is going to quickly, quickly change um, and there's some debate as to how quickly this is going to happen. Anthropic has come out and saying that by 2027, coding will be automated. But OpenAI Chief Product Officer Kevin Wheel says that this could happen by the end of the year. So that's pretty massive as far as how automation is quickly, quickly changing and making everything so much faster and so much more capable, again, through the agentic capabilities, through the agentic processes. This actually correlates really well with my use of AI in Industries and Organizations 2025 document that specifically talks about how AI is being used more and more within computer software engineering, AI specialists, and computer programming. There I specifically stated that there's expanding accessibility to programming because AI is making it so much easier for more and more people to get into that field. So now I want us to take a step back, right? That's all going on in computer science. That's all in the coding processes. But what about everything else? Because as AI is getting more capable, won't all of this that we're talking about with vibe coding, couldn't that be applicable to every single other field? I mean, if you're talking about architecture, about economics, accounting, won't we be able to get to the point where hey, I don't have to worry about the specifics. I can just tell the AI, do this for me. Tell the AI, hey, create this type of structure, create this, and it will do it and put it all together for me. So now I function only to verify. I only function to, to check. I'm working with the AI, but it's able to do so much more. Now, some of you might, might come out and say, well, well, no, we don't want that at all because now we might lose capability and so the very best people, they'll just do it all on their own. I, I'd like to agree with that, but again, we have to think about the business aspect, right? Because if I, if I see that, hey, someone with this AI capability that can use the AI, they're able to accomplish things 50% faster, like we just saw in that statistic for coding, if they're able to be that much faster, well, then I'm gonna go with the person that is using AI. Now, of course, th things still have to work, right? We have to verify things. But, man, uh, as a business, of course you're going to go to whoever can do things more efficiently, faster, and better. We have to take a step back and also think about, okay, well, what about when things go wrong, being able to, to check things, to verify things? If we don't have this type of foundational knowledge to be able to see things that are wrong, to be able to predict things, well, then we're going to have problems. But again, the AI will be able to do those type of things. So we have to consider what do we need to do in education to properly prepare students for this type of world? Because I know from talking to lots of instructors that there'll be lots of opposition and say, well, no, I teach computer programming. I'm not going to change that. They need to know these foundational skills. And I agree. Foundational skills should always be there for every genre, for every degree. Yes, we need foundational skills. They need to be able to understand theory. But they also need praxis, right? We have to be able to do. So we need to be able to understand, well, what are the current tools being used out there? And what are the future tools being used out there that I need to prepare my students to be able to do? So if vibe coding is the future then we need to make sure that we're incorporating that in our classes right now so that our students are fully capable of doing that. Now, the, the other issues as far as like over-reliance and not understanding certain things, those are things that have to be addressed for sure. And not just in coding, but in every single field. Because if I'm using the AI to help me to create things, 
well, I still need to know the foundational skills in order to be able to properly analyze these things. But that needs to be something that is explicitly taught to students, not something that's implied. No, we have to be able to explicitly tell the students, hey, you need to learn this concept. You need to have a bigger picture understanding because an AI will be able to do all these minute little things. You need to have big picture understanding. You need foundational knowledge to understand some of those minute things as well but we have to prepare them to be able to use those tools for higher and higher capabilities, right? I, I hate to use the analogy of the calculator, but that comes into play. I'm not a good mathematician if I can't do basic math, but the more advanced stuff, no, we leave that to the calculator because now we can do much more with that. Now I know what's gonna happen is, oh, well, AI still hallucinates and it makes problems and it, it, it can't be relied upon. Yeah, look at the charts for hallucination. They're going down, 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 down. So that's going to be something that becomes something that we overcome. For sure, we should still be able to analyze and check, have that human in the loop. But this is something that is really important for us to understand in higher academia that, hey, we need to start to be thinking about the role of our students in this future society, in the current society, as far as being able to use these type of tools being able to use it to create product, having an understanding of how it works on some level, but not to the level of, well, I have to do everything myself, because again, that, that's going away. That's going away, and it's, it's not this matter of, oh, things will change and go back to that. That's not happening. We're constantly moving forward. So we need to be able to adapt quickly. Uh, there's so many instructors that have never even heard of this vibe coding thing, so that means that we're not able to address the needs of the students right now because this is something that's happening more and more. So we have to be able to incorporate this type of teaching where we're teaching students about understanding the big picture of critically thinking about what's going on, about avoiding over-reliance and about being able to constantly learn to develop these new skills and new capabilities to be able to work with new technologies. These are things that we need to be focused on right now and that might mean that we lose some time dealing with theory, okay? I love theory as well, so that we can focus on some of these other concepts because there needs to be some trade-off here as far as how we're spending our time to develop our student. Again, th this is something that is something that we need to be thinking purposely of because theory is very important as well, but there needs to be that proper balance. Right now, what I see happening in a lot of higher education is that there's too much theory. There's too much theory that students don't use, don't understand, because they're not applying those things within actual praxis. So there needs to be this proper alignment, because what's happening more and more is that the, the praxis aspect is changing so quickly because of new tools, new capabilities, that they're not ready at all when they graduate. So we need to be able to focus that and find that proper balance where we can dynamically adapt and help our students to gain that skill as well of dynamically adapting based off of this understanding of how things work. So uh, focus on those things and I think we'll be able to definitely use this understanding of vibe coding and how this is being applied to everything else because of AI development. Together we can get through this as we learn from one another. So I'm looking forward to your comments to see what your thoughts are here. What about vibe coding in business? What about vibe coding in anything that you can think of because the AI is being able to do more and more. And as we give more to the AI, it's being able to do all of these little things for us that we need to understand, okay, what's our role? What do we still need to know? What do we still need to develop? So I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say about this. And remember, learning is for life.